Hello everybody, it's Jeff, and this is episode number five of the Seekong C11 tutorial. Um, okay, some new stuff, and let's see, where shall I start? Um, let's talk about tile maps. Um, so... <clears throat> I got to thinking about this the other day, and I, I had originally written a tool in Rust to um, take an exist, take a bitmap uh, screenshot, basically that's been tidied up, and palette data, and tile data, and it goes through and it tries to find a best match and build a tile map, which is where this data came from here and this works it's pretty accurate it's not a hundred percent accurate um, but it's cumbersome right um, I have to grab a screenshot of the level in question from MAME I have to tidy it up I have to make sure that I have all the reference data that's correct and then we still have to clean it up after the fact. And so we have about, I don't know, there are four screens in Donkey Kong for gameplay, plus a track mode stuff, plus the title screen, plus high scores and other stuff, right? So let's say roughly they're somewhere between eight and 10, depending, um, tile maps. So I got to thinking, okay, how hard would it be to just build a tile map editor right into the game. And also, how difficult would it be to just save the tile map data to a data file and, and read it back in? So what I came up with was a new structure called tile map file that has a header, uh, has an eight character header, and then it has an array of tile map T's um, for tile map max and tile map max I set at 16. So since a tile map is exactly 1000, uh, well, I take that back. It's, um, what is it? It's, it's two bytes. It's four bytes times 1000. So it's 4k, oops, 4k times 16. So it's a 64k file is what we're going to have that will have all the tile maps. It'll have room for 16 tile maps for the game, which for Donkey Kong is more than sufficient, um, which also means we could create some new levels, right? Just for the fun of it. Um, I created a function called tile map init. So what tile map init does is it uses um, stern copy. So this is string length copy. This is the destination pointer. It's that header. So I have a static, uh, field in my module called that is the, the uh, tile map file T because we only have one of these at a time inside the engine and that's called s tile maps and the init I copy C Kong 11 asterisk into the into that char array and the reason I use the n version here is because I want to specify the length explicitly so we don't have any issues with overruns or anything like that and then I loop over the tile map data in um, the file structure and I zero everything out. So this is what init does. Um, and then I have a tile map load and a tile map save. And this is really pretty simple. We use fopen to read binary RB from a ckong.dat file. And we do an F read, passing the address of our um, structure, the size of that structure, and the number of those, which is one, and then the file handle, and then we close the file handle. To save it, we open the file handle for writing binary, and then we write out, passing a pointer to the um, tile, map, tile map data, the size of that, we're gonna do one of them, and we're gonna write it to this file, we're going to close it. So this reads in 64K. This writes out 64K. And, and that's it. Um, 
And then I also added tile map index, which will return a tile map from that file structure based on the index, so 0 to 15. Um, now, I'm leaving the hard-coded version in here for now because um, I want to transition this over to the data file part. Um, and we'll do that soon, and then we'll get rid of that, all that data in the code, and it'll just be a file. And then what I did was in the video module, I added a new flag to the background control record called FBG select. And I added a um, new function called video reset BG, which is kind of a companion to the reset sprites. And so this loops through the background control table and resets everything to, you know, the zero tile, zero palette, and enables, marks the um, entry is enabled and marks the changed flag. I'm not using that yet, but we will be putting that in there in, in the code here sh uh, shortly. And then um, inside of video BG update, which remember, this is the function that takes this background surface that we have, which is the size of the game screen, and it loops through the tile control table and it updates tiles that have been marked as changed and that are enabled. So I added some code to uh, mark or set uh, a variable called selected if this uh, particular control block actually has the select flag on it. And then inside of the rendering loop for the tile, I check and I say, hey, if it's selected and x is zero or x is the far right or y is zero or y is the bottom, then we're going to just render white. Um, otherwise, we render whatever the tile is. So what does this end up with? This ends up with a white little border around the edge of the tile if it's selected. There was also a bug in this code. I was using continue here when all these cases failed. Unfortunately, that's not really right. What should happen is if this tile isn't changed, then we should go we should move our X and Y position in the map and go to the next tile. So um, shame on me, I'm using a go-to here, but it works. And um, so if it's not changed, if it's not enabled, if we didn't find the palette, if we didn't find the bitmap, we come down here. And then we move our X position. If we get to the right edge of the screen, we reset X to zero and we go to uh, the next line. That solved the that solved that issue. So now the tile map updates properly as individual control blocks are are changed and marked as changed. So if I run this, and there's some other stuff, but I want to run this real quick first, then we can talk about some of the other details. Um, right now it's in uh, tile edit mode. So if I use the input, right, I can zoom around my tile map. Uh, for my selection, All right, and um, actually, I should wire up the joystick here because I don't think I have all the keyboard keys uh, mapped quite yet. Um, so let me rerun this. Uh, so the zeros that you're seeing here, this is the um, I've initialized it to tile zero, and this it just happens to be zero. Um, so with the joystick, I can actually do a couple of additional things. I can change the palette. Um, I can change the tile itself. So like I can go to make that a three and I can make that a two. Let's change the palette on that. Now, if I use the shoulder buttons, if I go hit the right shoulder button, now I'm on map one. If I use the left shoulder button, I'm on map uh, zero. You can't really tell because it's not persisting it permanently to the tile map. We're going to do that um, data. But uh, the basics are close. Now, there's a couple things I don't like about. Uh, it's a little rough. So what I would like to do is a couple things. One, um, I would like to, right now it's hard-coded when I run the app, it goes into the editor. I would like to change that. 
I would like to have a key or an input that basically will take me to this, this state um, if I'm not already in it. And, um, and then of course, obviously a key that will take me out of it. Um, and then it would be nice if we had, what, what I would, was thinking is instead of using the um, joystick buttons to control, you know, tiles that are being picked, right? Um, and changing the palette like this, what I would do is we can pop up a little window. It's actually very fast. Um, probably way too fast, actually, to be practical. Um, which is why I'm kind of thinking about popping up another window. Um, so when you want to pick... The way I'm thinking this will work is... I'm gonna ch we'll change this to where when you push a certain button, um, it will pop up a window and you can pick your tile. Um, if you push a different button in the edit mode, you can choose your palette. Um, and that whatever you choose, those will be your, that's, that'll stay constant until you change it. And then another button will be the draw button. So then you can push that button and draw with that particular, that particular tile, right? Which this kind of does a random thing because depending on how long I sit on a particular tile is, you know, what, uh, what color I get, right? Or what uh, tile I get. So it's a little, it's a little, the heuristics aren't great. The user in, uh, input system isn't good enough. So we're gonna improve that um, and get that to where it's, it's really good. And then the other thing we're gonna do today, and actually I think we'll do this one first, is let's write the code that's gonna allow us to uh, draw that top banner, which has got the high score and the number of lives and all the other good stuff. So. Um, the other changes that I made were in game. So instead of pushing the long intro, which is what I was doing before, I'm now pushing this tile map editor state. And it's a state in the state machine, just like everything else, which is kind of nice because it's a stack. So that means if we're wherever we're at in the game, if we decide we want to go into edit mode, we push our edit button. It'll take us into that state. We'll do our thing. We exit. It'll update the file. It'll update the tile maps, and then we can resume. So that means we can tweak things as we go. Um, and that'll hopefully improve the uh, turnaround time. So I added in the tile map editor um, callback functions. So edit or enter, update, leave, sorry. And then I added in the uh, state definition for it. And then we have our, for the um, tile editor, we actually have. Um, which I'm going to move these. Uh, we have a, a, a local structure. So this is in the uh, compilation unit and it's static because only this code uses it. Nothing else uses it. Um, that kind of just keeps track of state for the tile editor. What, what, uh, which tile map are we on? What's our X and Y position? And we're going to have some others in here. Like what's our current tile? What's our current palette? What are our current flags? There's going to be all sorts of good stuff, right? Um, and the enter, it just resets everything right now to reasonable values, logs out a message, and then sets the background to the first, whatever the index is for the tile editor right now, which is, right now it's always reset to zero. And then we do this tile map select. Tile map select takes a bool and it looks up the current tile based on the editor's X and Y position. And if we're gonna turn the select flag off, we and it out. Um, otherwise we or it in and then we always or in the changed flag because we want the update process to update that tile or those tiles. Um, and then inside of the update, right, if we hit the left shoulder button, if we hit the right shoulder button, if we hit A or B, I don't want to focus on these too much because we're going to rewrite, we're going to change some of these a little bit. But the, but the basics are in here. And then tile map editor leave is going to do a save, right? This will call that tile map save, which will write that data structure out to disk. And then eventually in tile map en uh, enter, right, we will load whatever, uh, well, we probably won't do a load here. We'll already have done the load, um, but we will do the save here, right? Because this is the only reasonable uh, place to actually do the save. And since we're always reading and writing the same file, it makes that whole process pretty simple. 
Um, okay. In fact, we could just call tile map save there. Um, and I think if I exit the game cleanly, let's let's see. We because what we should get is a zero, just a huge blob with the header. So if I hit escape, that's going to pop that state off, and we should have in our um, build debug folder. Yep, ccong.dat. So ccong.dat is. 65544 bytes, almost 64K. Um, so if I use my uh, little hex editor here on OS 10 and I open that file up, uh, yep. Which is exactly, so here's our header, Seekong. I know this is really tiny on the video. I'll make it a bit bigger here. Ah, I didn't mean to close it. Uh, open recent, Seekong. There we go. Okay, so here's our header, right? Which is the Seekong 11 and then the asterisk and then zeros. Now, the zero is because we're not saving anything yet. We're not putting anything into the structure. But eventually, as we edit these and we copy the data into the tile map data, which is here, when, when we exit that state, it's going to call save. It's going to write it to this file. And when the game starts up, it's going to call load and it's going to load whatever's in here. So, I mean, the tile maps will just be round tripped and that'll be that. So that part works just fine. So here's what we're going to do. First, in game, we're going to go back to long introduction. So let's rerun that, make sure that the changes I've made haven't... Yeah, that's fine. Um, so here's the game. I can still move Mario around. And remember, I turned on uh, up and down because we were testing that uh, clipping stuff last time. So, this is fine, right? This works. Ooh. It still clips at the top like it's supposed to. Okay, so that section that I'm talking about, I'm going to use Mario as my pointer here. That, that I'm talking about this top line where it says high score, and the line below it, and these two lines here. This is very consistent on the arcade. This top header pretty much appears everywhere. Um, so what we're going to do, and, and all this is code, this is all data. Um, I mean, technically the high score thing and, and the L equal is, could be part of the tile data, but we want to be able to generate this stuff on the fly. So it's, you know, one, two, three, four lines of the map that we're going to generate with code. Okay. So we're going to do that first. And so how are we going to do that? <clears throat> Um, and what's a good place for it? So there's a couple parts to this. First, I would say that in player, uh, there's going to be a function, right? Because we have lives, level, score. Um, where should high score go? Because high score is kind of owned by the machine, right? Um, it's stored in, in uh, non-volatile RAM in the machine. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new module. And I'm going to call it machine. And um, oops, forgot to check the checkbox. No PP for you. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't make dumb jokes.
Okay. Um, so what we're going to have is we're going to have a struct called machine and machine T. This is going to have a high score. Um, and we'll probably have some other things on here, like uh, definitely for sure we'll have um, credits. Um, so let's add a machine init and let's have machine init. So we're going to have a static machine T S machine and then machine init will just say S machine credits is zero S machine high score is for now zero. Um, we'll do machine load uh, config and machine save config. And so eventually We will have a config thing that we read and write for the machine. And this is going to have the high score table in it. It's going to have any other configuration values we, we want to be uh, accessible within the machine. Um, but for now, and we, need, we need an access function, right? So machine T, machine. Ooh, the heck? That C line sometimes does not include files properly. Okay, so from anywhere now, we can access the machine. And what we should do is in game init, we should call, we're calling tile map init, we, we should call machine init. Um, and and machine here again refers to the arcade machine. State machine is is actually our state machine for the gameplay itself, the the game engine. Um, and and I'm going to go ahead and tile map load here because it's I think it's safe to do. Then we do a video init and we push our initial state. And which is still not really the right initial state, but it's okay for now. Um, so let's let's run that. So the reason again that I added the machine stuff is because I'm trying to think of all the parts that go into this header, right? And so some of it is like the high score that's from the machine. Uh, player one and player two, that's the current state. That's the current player data, just like lives. And, and now the level two is kind of um, the current state. So we have two or three spots, right, that we're going to pull information from. Um, so now the player, and actually I just realized this, I could probably, because in my, my state context, I could probably put machine to So I did a forward declaration there because it's a pointer 
And I mean, we probably technically could do the same thing now with game controller T. Um, and what that's what that's doing is it's removing the necessity of uh, for us to have these header files uh, included in another header file. And you might say, well, why is that a problem? But what what ends up potentially happening as you get into as your as your code gets complex enough you run the risk of having like recursive includes like this include needs that include because it's defining things uh, so with the forward declaration we can avoid that um, because these are pointers right and pointers are always the same size for a given platform um, so that really we only need the name to help kind of sync stuff up uh, oops Right, so, and then here, see, so notice, in the game, so, in um, State Machine, right, which was including all these files, game was including State Machine, which then had access to these other structures. Really, then, what we want is we want to include these parts in the module itself, right? We don't want to include things... Uh, in the header file, in a header file that then accidentally gets included into another module, um, Okay, so we cleaned up that header file mess. Now we have forward declarations for these types that are just pointers. And so now our, our state machine header is, is nice and happy. If we go to the game header, um, we can kind of do the same thing. Let's do a type def. Uh, no, actually, so, okay, so this is interesting window we can't type def really because this we have to include um, the game controller um, we can eliminate that and the linked list we can also simplify that to And this is a uh, this is a pattern you're going to go through uh, semi frequently. So like we're including string here, but we're not really using it. So the only thing we have to include right now, because again we're composing that structure inside of the game context structure, it's not a pointer. Um, so now, yep, we have some things that are missing because we took those includes out of the header file. Uh, so again, the general rule of thumb is you want to try to avoid um, including the world in header files. A, it does slow the compiler down slightly. Um, okay, so then we need, yep, because see again, this is the kind of stuff you run into. You, we had the game header file, which was including the game controller. Yeah, so it's just much cleaner if we make sure these all live in their respective modules. Right, just make sure that everything's okay. Looks okay to me. All right. Okay. better. 
better butter. Okay, so in game init, we're calling machine init, tile map init, tile map load, video init, pushing our state. Um, I think on the shutdown side, we're fine. We don't have to do anything else. Or I should say anything new. Um, okay, so now let's go to our state machine. And for our long introduction state, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call a function here that, so again, on context, we have the controller, the level, the player, the machine, and actually, <laughs> good thing I just went, did that because... That's game context. Let's so move this down. And we'll say S state context machine is equal to machine, and we'll call the accessor. So we have to call that function once. That's going to return the pointer where I put that on the state context. Okay, so now our state context has a valid machine pointer on it. So we have the machine, we have the player. Um, we don't have a level right now, but that's okay. Um, So well, let's look at player. So actually, I want to follow the same pattern. So let's take that. Okay, um, and I'm going to be really lazy, I'm going to go to the header file, paste that, get rid of the body, and now we have our prototypes, <clears throat> and the initialization for these is simple, since these are all base types, these are just numeric types, we can just initialize these cleanly in line, so we don't need to have a player init, and then in um, game, in game and net s state context player is equal to player one right so now we're kind of following the same consistent pattern everywhere um which and that makes sense right the player didn't feel like it belonged here in this module but the state context does that makes sense and okay so now context has player information and player has the level numeric level that he's on has his score in his live so that's like a big chunk of it so um Yeah, so let's do this. Let's go to player. 
and let's add a function called player uh, status player heads up no it's eh, player header update oh how's that and we'll pass in a const player t player so the same function will be able to service uh, either player although mm, they are zoned differently so Player one header update, player two header update. Sometimes simple is best. Okay. So now in our module, we want to include video. And okay, so let's, how do we even do this? Um, I'm going to run the app. And so, um, one, two, three, four, five, so I would say like six, six for line one is the player score. And it's a six digit, zero padded six digit decimal. So let's just do that one part. Okay. Um, player one so we're gonna get we need a buffer um, actually let's just have one buffer six we're gonna do an SN printf and So SN printf is prints a does a printf a formatted print to a string buffer with a specified length. So we're going to pass buffer. Uh, the length is six. The format string is so if we go into the header file, it shows should show us what we've got here. So it's the string, the length. Um, uh, usually they have a, oh, here it is. Is there a comment? Usually they have a comment that shows the, um, let's see. <clears throat> so the buffer, the size, the, the format, and then the various, okay. So it's going to be percent zero six D and we're going to use S player one score. Okay. So again, remember percent D is an integer, uh, substitution, right? Zero six just means pre pad it with zeros for a max length of six digits. And it's a decimal or not a decimal. It's a, it's an integer. So this formats the player score into this string buffer. So now what we want to do is we want to walk the characters can't do it that way. Um, not C++. <clears throat> so we want to get a BG control block T pointer and we're going to use video tile, which is a function we already have. It takes a Y position, which in this case is one. So it's the first line down and we know it's, it's, um, six. We said it was six ish on the X plus plus I and want to cast here. And then we're going to set the tile equal to buffer sub i. 
So how does this work? Well, um, the folks that did this were pretty clever and they typically would put the ASCII values, so A through Z, zero through nine, they would typically place these in the tile map um, at, a, at the appropriate ASCII index so that you just would place an ASCII value in your buffer and voila, you get text. Um, I'm not sure which palette that should be, so let's go to the tile map uh, file and let's look. So this is line zero, this is line one. So one, So these are the zeros for the score. So one, two, three, four. It's actually four, not six. And it's using palette one. So let's set the palette to one. And we don't need any flags for this one. Um, and then we need to mark that this has changed, right? Otherwise, um, it won't update the map for us. So what I would like to do then is zero uh, A is a blank. So let's do this first. Let's update these. And actually, now, now that I look at it, these may not be exactly I don't know, ASCII aligned. So we may have to do some adjustment. Okay, so if I run the app again, because I changed the tile map in memory, the, yes, the player's score is now gone, right? See, I took it out of the tile map, so it's just a blank. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to um, go to the state machine and we're going to let's do it on enter because again the score only we only need to update the tile map if the score changes we don't need to update it every frame so what, what I'm going to call here is player one Update, header update um, and since this is a module we're, we're cool including that header file no issue there okay so we set Mario's position we set, we set the tile map we set Mario's position and we call this update and this update is going to put something in the tile map the question is Will it be right? So let's see. No. <laughs> it's close. We're off though. Um, I'm not sure why. Okay, so let's look at the, let's look at the tile map data. I think I know how this is working. So ASCII table, I'm, I'm just looking online for an ASCII chart real quick because my memory's horrible. Um, I never remember these things. So the character zero is 48. So if I'm thinking about this right, the way they did this, let's open up the bitmap just to make sure. But, but I think zero through nine are literally zero through nine in the tile map. So, uh, oops, no, I gotta look at Rusty Kong because that's where I have my Donkey Kong tiles. Okay, so these are pretty tiny, so I gotta zoom in. Yes, so zero through nine is literally zero through nine. Um, so, Let's 
that's easy. So we go back to player and we can't just use the ASCII value directly. We have to subtract uh, We have to subtract it from 48. So why 48? Because 48 is the ASCII value of zero. Um, and so that's basically going to zero base. It's gonna take the, the ASCII number, it's gonna zero base it, yes. Here's what we got. Now, we're off though. So maybe it's, why, wait, why is that? Hmm. Very interesting. Let's do this. Let's rerun it. Let's walk through this code and see what we see. So first, we have the debugger. Oh, see? This is why I generally do not like the null is in there. <laughs> I, I didn't make enough room for the null. Okay. One, two, three, four. Ah, why is it not? Oh, there it is. No. One, two, three, four, five. Null, null. Uh, So actually, first, we probably want to make this a 32-bit integer because if we want a score of 999999, that's going to be easier that way. Um, and then, smprintf, n, the maximum number of bytes to be used in the buffer. The generated string has a length of at most n minus 1 leaving space for the additional null termination character. Yeah, which is what I would expect. Okay. Ah, it warned me about something. Still getting two nulls. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then there's one null. So if I okay, it has to be one. It has to include the the null and the length. I forgot that. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have our null character. Um, and the rest of that, yes, now it looks fine. Um, so there's our high score, there's our score. Now, if I remember correctly though, it was over by one. I think we, I think I miscounted. So let's change our offset here. And let's run that again. Yep, okay, that looks correct. There you go. So there's the player score. Now we're gonna do the guys. Um, but before we do that, let's initialize the player score to something like 
692. I don't know. Just some interesting number. I know, so we can actually see that it's going to format it properly. Ooh, and it doesn't. Haha. -ha. We got the zeros. We don't have anything else. Um. Oh, right, because I'm a silly goose. There we go. It helps when I get things the right way around. So there you go. So that's how we format data, dynamic data, into the, the tile map, okay? Um, the tiles themselves are organized in such a way that we can take ASCII values and, and pretty trivially convert them into tile numbers. Now let's write um, yeah, let's write the code that does the players. So this is line one, this is two, this is three. So let's go to the tile map. So this is line one, or zero, one, two, three. And here's the guy. FF. 0 2 FF 0 2 FF 0 2. Okay. So, so the tile is FF. The palette is um, 2. So let's um, change the tile map to have blanks here. Okay. Let's run that. So the little little guys in the tile map for the lives should be gone. Yep. There you go. So I took those out. Now we're going to add them back in programmatically based on how many lives are in the player's data structure. So it was FF and palette 2. So we call this one function. It's going to do the player's score and it's going to do the player's lives. So the easiest thing here is to just loop is less than s player one lives and um, oops we're going to copy that paste it there this is going to be the tile is always the same the palette's always the same um, and this is going to be three is that right? Zero, one, two, three, I think so, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's run that. And that should update the tile map with, yep, with the player's lives. And there you go. Now we have dynamic code for player one that updates the score and updates the number of lives they have. Now let's do the high score. Let's, uh, let's do that, that'll be in the machine because again, the high score is owned by the machine. Um, and we'll do player two. After we get player one working, we get everything working, we'll come back, we'll do the player two stuff. Um, and there's some other things we, we need to do here. The one up, the blinky one up thing, we need to do that and a couple other things. So, um, but baby steps, baby steps. Okay, so high score. Um, Let's just look at line zero, because that's got high in it, right? So we got a bunch of blanks, blank, 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 until we get to 18 hex, which is, I'm going to look at my ASCII table real quick. 18 hex is, it's device control two. <laughs> um, or no, I'm sorry, it's can. 18 hex is cancel on the ASCII table. So... The letter A is 42, or I'm sorry, 41, um, no, sorry. The letter A is 65 decimal. Their tile data is encoded at 24 decimal for letter A. So that means we have to subtract uh, 
65. No, I said that wrong. That means we need to subtract the difference between 65 and 24. We need to subtract 41 to get uh, a valid ASCII or a valid tile number from an ASCII uppercase ASCII character. Okay, so this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's at eleven. So let's just make a note of that. So let's just, I think that, I think we have all the pertinent information we need, except that space is 32. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So if it's space, we need to manually do magic. So, okay. So let's just, um, let's reset these. So there is no high, the words high score won't be up top. Oh, and these are palette zero. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. And, yep, high score, the word high, high score on the top line is gone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the code into the machine update uh, header to do that dynamically. Okay, so um, and let's let's set the high score to be um, nine nine eight seven seven nine. I just picked up <laughs> just so we can get some variation, you know, in the output. Um, so uh, okay, first we're going to do the letters high score. So um, let's just do const char star high score is equal to high score. And the length of that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So we're going to loop. Okay, if, oh no, let's not do it that way. I'm gonna rape and paste here, which is dangerous. And be careful with rape and paste. Okay. So we're gonna be at line zero and our offset we said was 11. Our palette is zero. The tile, if high score sub i, is equal to um, space, or we can do it this way, then block tile is equal to 0x0a, and block palette, I believe, let's look at the tile map, is f. Otherwise, it's going to be high score I minus 41. And then we mark the change flag 
And there you go. And what we can do, we can we can push this down a layer. Um, oh, I'm not calling it yet. I need to add the call. Okay, so let's add the call into the state machine, into the enter. So machine header update. Now I'll run it. Ooh, it's off. <laughs> We're getting OPNO. -O. Yeah, that's interesting. So let's look at the tile bitmap. We're getting OP. We're getting all this stuff down here. Okay. Um, so we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight off. Too high. Eight off, too high. Sixty-five. It doesn't seem right, but oh, I'm I'm very close though. I think. Yeah. So it's 50. Why? How did I? Hmm. I'm confused. Did I accidentally subtract? No. There it goes. Okay. Yeah, I was one. I was off. I don't know how I'm, my math was off a bit. Um, so there we go, high score. And then we're getting the right space. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to refactor this. So we're going to say size T, length is sterling high score. Let's make sure that works. Yep, that's okay. There we go. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this block. We're gonna go to video.c and we're gonna plunk this down. Video bg stir const char star high score. We're going to rename the variable though. Okay. So now we'll rename this to stir and oh, and we need another parameter. We need what is this? We need a uint 8t y uint 8tx. So this is going to be Y, this is going to be X, so now I'm going to copy this and put it in the header. So the prototype is exposed, so here. I'm going to call video bg stir passing in high score. And the y is 0 and the x is 11. Ah, but there is another thing here. We need the palette. Just realize that. And that's getting a bit long for me, so I'm going to chop this. Now 
Now you might be asking why I'm not using my string stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. I wanted to kind of do a little bit of some, some folks suggested that I do some stuff with the standard string library. So I just wanted to include some of that in here. Okay, so we pass in the string, the Y, the start X, and the palette. We get the length of the string passed in, and I suppose we should do what we do for everything else. We should assert that stir is not null. If it is, something bad has happened. So we get the length, we loop from zero to the um, less than the, the end of the length. We get the control block for our Y and our X plus our increment, our offset. If the character is a space, then we set the tile to um, A hex and we set the palette to F hex. And this is always the same, you know, for that blank that we see. Otherwise, we set the tile to the character minus 48, which offsets correctly into the tile map. So we get character values, uh, letter values. And then we set the palette to the palette that's passed in. And then we set the change flag. So now in the video submodule, we have a routine that does strings. So um, all we have to do is call this. So and voila, high score. Now we'll replace the actual score with our value. Um, but before we do that, let's go back to player here for a second. And let's, let's refactor this so that um, we have a generic way of doing uh, numeric strings because well, actually though, man, I'm silly. It's the same. Okay. We can actually use the same routine. The offsets are the same. Interesting. I didn't notice that. Let me just double check. Yeah, the offsets are the same. Okay. So actually, we already have it. <laughs> it's called video BG stir. And we pass in buffer. And our Y is 1, and our offset is 3, or X is 3, and our palette is 1. So I should just be able to comment that out. Rerun this. And there we go. So we have the same routine that's doing this, that's doing the high score, which means we can do this score very trivially now. So we'll get rid of this. I'm going to copy that block. We're going to go to machine.c. And we're going to stick this in here. And this is going to be S machine high score. And why did I include the string? I don't know. So the high score is just below the words, right? So um, we know that the high score is at 11. Uh, so it's going to be line one, and it's going to be uh, high score is eleven. We said what we said it was what, ten characters, eleven characters. So I'm going to say it should go to twelve, and the palette should probably be one, just like. Oh, 
Oh, it's in standard I.O. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, oh, I didn't, okay. So it's, this is actually helpful. We're one off. So the game actually put it at 13, but also I forgot to take it out of the tile map data itself. So that right, Here. There you go. Okay, so it's out of the original tile map and Voila, there we go. So we've replaced, now we are dynamically generating the player's score, the player's lives, the, the word, uh, word's high score and the high score value. Now the next thing is the level indicator. And we were really close on this because um, all we need to do is format it up. So in level, Let's have um, level header update, and we're going to just pull in standard I.O., and we have our buffer, which is doesn't need to be this big, so this is going to be um, L equal 1, 2, so 4. We need five, right? Five. So this is L equal two places, zero padded. And then this is going to be... Oh, now this is interesting. The level, it doesn't know what level. It's the player that knows that. So... Okay, so now we, we don't know where in the tile map that is. I'm going to guess it's right here. So it's palette 2, and I would say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20. One, two, three, four, twenty-four. And instead of going to, let's go to line two. I want to put it right above. And the palette looked like it was two. Okay. Oh, close. <laughs> Very close. Um, so I'm one off horizontally. And the equal sign is probably a special case. Um, so this is 23. And let's look at the tile map uh, or the tile set. The equal symbol is, looks like, Zero, one, two.
51. Okay, so So there's, there's going to be a handful of these that we're going to have to special case. Oh, okay. So I'm, as usual, I'm one off. Looks like. I can't count. Yep, I'm one off. Okay, so we have the right format now, or the right palette. So let's do this. Let's go to the tile map. And let's get rid of what's on the tile map already. Let's just double check and make sure that that one goes away. Then we'll move ours down and we'll fix the default level number. Yep. So the hard-coded one is out of the tile map. This is the one we're generating dynamically. Um, let's go here and set the player level to... Actually, let's do this. Let's just... It's probably going to be zero-based for us. So let's just add one to it and then that will be the right thing. And then we want to go down the line. And, yep, there we go. Yeah. There's our level indicator, our high score, our player score, our guys, and of course, everything else continues to function normally. And Again, we only have to call these update things. Like, so if the player loses a life, we call player update header update. If, if the score changes, we call player header update. If the level changes and so on and so forth, we don't have to change, we don't have to call it every single frame because once this is in the background bitmap, it's fine until, you know, something new comes along. Um, so, That's big, that's huge, because um, now we can change the tile map programmatically on the fly. And that's going to be a very important piece in the whole puzzle. Okay, so let's review what we did. Um, yep, need to clean this one up. My obsessive compulsive formatting, shining through. Okay, so we added the machine module and the header file. Uh, what's a good order here? So, okay, so in video, the header file, I added video BG stir, which takes in a const char star pointer uh, to a string, null terminated a Y position, a start X position, and a palette. And then if we look at the implementation of that, we assert that the string we pass in is not null. We get the length of the string. We loop through each character in the string. We grab the control block for the background for the Y position and the X plus our increment, right? So we're starting at an X and we're going over one character at a time based on the length of the string. If the string if character, so if the ASCII character is a space, 
and we need to put the tile, uh, we put, put the tenth tile in because that's our empty and we set the palette to F. Um, if it's equal, then we're outside of our kind of our ASCII range. So then we just hard code tile 52 and we use the palette that was passed in. Otherwise, we take the ASCII value, we subtract 48. That offsets the ASCII value into the Donkey Kong tile map uh, properly. We set the palette, we set the change flag, and we loop until we're done. Um, and that allows us to dynamically put text into the tile map. Then in the tile map, I took out the hard-coded values that were there. Because again, remember, I took a screenshot from MAME and then I converted that into this data set with my tile map ripper. Um, but again, th this data is data that the program generates. It's not really a part of the tile map. Um, so I just uh, took all that stuff out. And in State Machine, um, I tidied up headers. I noticed that I was including a lot of headers and it was kind of getting uh, out of control. And again, the general rule here is Unless it's a, you know, external library, I'm trying not to include headers within headers um, where I can avoid it. So I just did a forward declaration. So this is, again, you can think of this as a prototype for the compiler. And that allows me to use these as pointers without including the header file. Um, I added the machine uh, T pointer onto the state context. So now, again, the states will have access to everything. They'll have access to the machine, I have access to the player, the level, the game controller, and anything else we need. Um, in the implementation file for the state machine, I added some includes because they, I took them out of the header. I, I moved them into here. And then we have some new, we have a new include here for the machine. Um, and then I moved my private structure under the header block here. Uh, or the common block, just so it's all kind of together. And then um, for, oh well, yeah, so also tile map editor, we call tile map save. Now right now it's just saving out, you know, a bunch of zeros in the header. Eventually though, real soon here, next couple of episodes, this will be saving real tile map data after we edit it. And then when we enter the long introduction state, I call machine at header update. So that updates the high score uh, up at the top. And then I update the player one header information. So that updates the player's score, the number of lives, and the level. And in player, we added accessor. So we moved the player structures into the player module to kind of be consistent. I changed the score to be a 32-bit integer so that we could go up to 999999. Nine, 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 nine. Um, and then I added two accessors, one for player one, one for player two. And then I added two uh, update header update functions for player one, player two. Um, in the C file, so again, some new headers, move the definitions of the players in here. For now, I just set the default, I set a score here so we can actually see something besides zero on the tile map. Our accessor functions just return the address of our players. And then our player header update, we, we create a buffer, a uh, local buffer, the seven characters, um, and we format zero padded, a six digit integer score, and then we write that out to the background. And then we loop through the number of player lives. This is kind of a special case, this one. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't think there's really much point in commonalizing this. Um, there's gonna be a couple of these, right, where we create certain kinds of special graphical tiles that, that there's just no easy mapping for them. So this creates a tile in the tile map for each life the player has. Then we format the level indicator into the buffer and we put that in the tile map. And, and then I added machine. So machine structure has the high score credits and credits here is like the number of coins you've put in. We're gonna emulate that. Um, and then, uh, we have a machine init, we have a machine accessor, machine load and save config, and machine header update. Um, some of these are kind of like for future stuff we're gonna get to. So we have our static machine, we init it, we set credits to zero, and I just set the high score to some you know number so that we could actually see something rendering on the screen. The accessor returns back the 
address of the, the uh, static machine. Eventually load and save config will read and write a file that's kind of going to be like the equivalent of NVRAM in an arcade board, right? It'll be, this is like the battery backed config. How many credits does it take to start a game? Uh, what's the high score table? Um, how diff what's the difficulty level? Um, so on and so forth, right? Um, machine header update, right? So we just write the words high score at the very top. We have our buffer, we format our high score value and we write it into the background. Level, um, I added level header update because I was thinking the level number was here, if it's not. So um, <coughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it here because I think we probably will have some code in here. Um, but for now, it's just kind of sketched out placeholder. And then in the game header file, some more header include cleanup, right? So I did some forward declaration here um, so that I don't have to include those things in the header file. And then in the game uh, C file, I include the headers here instead of in the header. Uh, I initialize everything to null in the state context. And then in the game init, we're calling machine init now tile map in it, tile map load. So we, if, you know, we load that empty file and we, um, we save it out and then uh, we call video in it. Um, and then we set the machine to the machine and we set the player to the player, to player one for now. Um, and then I changed the state back to our long introduction state for testing purposes. And that was it. There is one thing I realized here. Um, mm -hmm. I think we want to do... Yeah. Okay. So I realized as I was going through the code review here that there is a bug in this code here because I actually added save in first, if you remember, which created the file and then load is fine because the file's there. But what we really want to do is say access um, Kong dat uh, and this should be unit standard h Um, so if it's equal to negative one, we're just going to bail. So what this is doing is this is checking to see if the file exists. If it, if it exists, then this will be something other than negative one and we'll go ahead and read it in. Otherwise we will just not try to read it. So I'm going to run it once with the file there and everything seems fine. And actually what we'll do Just do that. Okay, so I'll open up my terminal. I'm gonna remove. Ooh. Good thing I guess we're gonna rebuild, huh? <laughs> I deleted the executable. <laughs> okay, so the app still runs, no worries. And if we look at our log, do 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 do. Here it is. Warn, Kong dat file is missing, not loading. But now if I run it again, because I've saved it. Oh, it's still saying it's missing, okay. Did it not save? Yep. 
It did not save. Oh, right, because the thing that saves it is the editor, and we're not in the editor. Okay, that's fine. We'll get to that. I think this is fine. It's doing what it's supposed to. Um, okay. So let's just... Uh, I'll do a diff on that again. We included the unit uh, standard header file, which has the access function in it. This should be reasonably cross-platform. I mean, we'll certainly work on OS X and Linux. I don't know about Windows right off the top of my head. My guess is it probably will work. There's probably, it's just probably a wrapper in the header file, but um, we're probably gonna have to come back in here and do some pound if def magic for Windows. Um, it shouldn't be too bad, but we probably will have to do some. All right. Alrighty, I am going to push that up to the develop branch, GitHub, and for this episode, episode number five, that is going to be a wrap. So in the next episode, um, what I would like to do is uh, get the all the actors configured. So in our one screen, we're just, I'm going to throw actors on everything. So we're going to have Donkey Kong animating. We're going to have Pauline. We're going to have barrels and fireballs and all that stuff. We're going to get all that stuff working. Um, and then once that's done, I think all of the prerequisite foundational stuff, minus sound, we'll do sound last, um, is, uh, will be in place. Then we'll go back to the tile uh, map editor and we'll finish that off. Mm. And um, then we'll do all, we'll lay out all the tile maps with the editor and, and then we'll start building out the game state and the gameplay. So it's really uh, coming along. And um, as always, if you like this video, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also join us on uh, our, my Twitch stream Monday through Saturday, uh, 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, my Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash nibblesio. That's N-Y-B-B-L-E-S-I-O. Um, and yeah, I will um, be following up with part six very soon. So have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.